Today's project is Simplicity 9462, and I'm going to be making this pretty little nighty in the shorter length. It comes in two lengths, and I'm going to do the shorter one. I don't want quite to the floor. Let me show you the beautiful fabric I found. It's already been pre-washed. This is a flannel. It's a fl soft floral. It calls for about four and a half yards if it's 45 wide. I went ahead and ordered five yards. Some flannels shrink and you never know. And I would rather have a little extra than not enough. And we're going to just cut it out. The only other things you're going to need are quarter inch elastic, some single fold bias that's half inch wide, and a few buttons. We're ready to cut out. All right, let's get cutting. I want to tell you when I was cutting out my pattern pieces, it has pockets. I remember seeing that when I bought the pattern and, and I forgot. So I'm super stoked. I don't have to come up with a pocket for this. This is a nighty with a pocket in it. Good news. Now I was sewing with 45 inch wide fabric and the pattern pieces are wide and you can only get one per width. So you can't like fold this in half to cut. Um, if you do not have a directional fabric, you're going to fold it back on itself like this lengthwise. So you have a long double fold and you'll cut it out that way. Mine's directional. It doesn't look like it at first, but it is. So I'm actually going to cut on this fold, flip them around so that I have them both facing the same direction, but right sides together, wrong sides together. So when I cut it out, I get, don't end up with two rights or two lefts that it, it works out. So I'm gonna cut this down the middle and line up my fabric real quick for cutting. And then after that, it's pretty straightforward. Now you could tear this. Sometimes flannels tear and sometimes they don't. This one should tear fine, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna slice. This is the top of this piece. I'm gonna put them right sides together. A lot of fabric to mess with. All right, here's the top. And depending on what you're working with, this could be sewn, um, if you look, it even says knit. So you can do flannel, you could do a gauze, you could do a lightweight batiste, depending on the time of year you are sewing this. Um, it has a sort of vintage look to it, but it has elastic in it. You could, where the elastic is, you could put in a drawstring and this would be a very, very vintage. Okay, let's double check that I did that right. Tulip, tulip, okay, I have it lined up right. And this is my top, so I don't wanna cut any pieces upside down. Now the sleeve on this has, it's the same sleeve, but one of them has an elastic sort of in the middle, so you can have sort of like a little bubble at the bottom if you want to. And when cutting out the pieces, I noticed there's an elastic guide. It looks like this. I don't cut out my elastic guide. If you've sewn with me before, you know I always say, don't cut this apart, leave it just like it is. And you just measure against this guide and cut your elastic. This is just for cutting the length of the elastic. So this long one's for the neck. One of them is for the sleeve that says B is for the middle one if you're doing that, and then sleeve A is for the wrist. I'm only doing the sleeve for the wrist, so I think that's number nine. Nine is the wrist, 10 is for up higher. So we're only gonna cut elastic for neck and wrist. I want the shorter length, so what I did is it has a shorter length line, and I finger pressed it. I just turned up and went like this all along that line first. And then I took the excess and I just folded it out and pinned it because I may want to make the longer length. I pretty much never get rid of that length or just cut it off and take it back later. I leave it on if at all possible. Um, and then we're just lining up our straight up grain against the um, selvage. And I don't mean it goes against the selvage. I mean, we, we measure from straight of grain to selvage edge to make sure that they're e equidistant from each other for lining up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start laying out my pieces and it has a good guide in the pattern for how to lay out your pieces also nothing is on the fold there is a center front seam and there is a center back seam so we don't have to worry about that the center front seam will have a little placket in it all right it's a little messy to look at but this is how the layout is going i've got a sleeve my first pocket my placket here's my front garment right next to the selvage here's the back getting ready to go on. This is one where if you can cut out on the floor, it probably would be easier. After I get these pieces, I need a neck ruffle, which I can put down here. And I did shorten the sleeve a little bit. The sleeve was just too long for me to begin with, and I kind of would prefer a three-quarter sleeve, so I shortened it on the shortened line. And then you can see this line right here is my truing line. You can true it a lot of ways. I could have taken some out of the fullness or added some in, and I just added it in. So. That's it. And then as you can see, 
neckline that's the top of the pattern the top of the pattern the top of the pattern top of the pattern because this is directional fabric so here's the ruffle which is the last piece and you can kind of see i've been just rolling from the top and pulling it down it is awkward because my fabric is so wide and i don't have that my cutting table is not um, i do have a second cutting table but they're different heights it's a whole thing so i'm doing my best but i'm going to go ahead and just start cutting from the bottom and working my way up and I just kind of slide the fabric back and forth a little bit to get to each piece. I don't cut anything else, anything out until it's all pinned to make sure that I don't have any fabric issues where I might need to do some changes. So don't like pin one, cut, pin one, and cut. You may get to the end and find you can't get something out of it. So always do a pin check before cutting. Now that we're cut out, the first thing we want to do is find our little front placket pieces and interface them. So I have done that. And then if you're making loops, we're going to make that little continuous loop and it is, it's tiny. So this is what it looks like. You just need one. It's cut on the bias. So we're gonna take our little teeny tiny piece, you fold it in half. They have you sewing a little thing at the end to help pull it through. You're gonna sew in like an eighth of an inch and turn it to get a little fabric loop. I'm doing it on flannel and that makes it even harder. You can do the thing where you fold in the two little edges and then you fold it on top of itself. So you're kind of folding everything to the inside and top stitch it. If you're working with something that frays easily, the turning may make the thing fall apart. Then in those cases, I would do the tuck in each edge, stitch that little tiny strip all the way down, which is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to get both of those things done. The next thing, after you've prepped your um, placket and your little loops is we're going to sew our center front of our garment. And they just have us do a 5 8 inch seam. There's a marking that tells us where to stop. Now, because it has to be pressed open because we're putting a placket in there, it's not as easy to serge that seam down. We have to have it open. So I'm personally going to go ahead and serge my center front um, seam allowance before I sew it together. You could also sew that part and then go back and serge it. What you don't want to do is stretch or pull. Be careful about how you feed it through. You don't want to get any rippling or, or movement in that seam allowance. It's going to affect how it goes together. So I'm going to go ahead and serge that flat before sewing it together. And as I'm looking at this, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the side seams also because we have the little pocket going in and it just makes things a little more secure. So I'm probably not going to be constructing as much at the serger. I put the sleeve in for sure um, and a few few parts, but I don't think I'm going to be constructing entirely at the serger. I'm maybe just doing seam seam allowance finishing there. In recap, we're going to interface our plackets, we're going to make our little loops, and we're going to sew our center front together to the marking where it says to stop. It'll have a circle that'll say where you stop. So here we are. We've got all these little circles. And this one right here is where we stop sewing. See this one right down here? These are where you sew up to and stop. These little tiny ones are where the loop is going to go for um, our buttonhole loop. So we're gonna go ahead and do that part first and then we'll be back in just a minute. But oh my goodness, we've got dramatic lighting. So instead of turning and stitching, I have folded in my seam allowance like this and now I'm gonna do a tiny little top stitch down and finish off and this will be my little loops. I've marked, you can see this little yellow dot, this is where the loops are going to go that we made. So I took my loop and I cut that exactly in half and then this is going to get put on there. Okay, so this is how it looks. If you have one side of your loop that looks better than the other, like this side does not look as good, this is the wrong side. So that's the side that's gonna be up. When it gets sewn, it's gonna flip over and this is the side you will see. So we're just gonna stitch through that just to stay stitched to hold it down till we do our little placket. And then for the placket, so let me just show you on the directions. We've done this and we've done this and I just pinned that on. And then this is the placket and this is the picture they drew, which is a little confusing, but what they're actually doing is there's a marking on the pattern piece, a big circle, and that's where you're gonna stop sewing, and we're just going to sew that together. It's sort of like a little center front, so that is going to get sewn together right up to that mark and stop. We're going to take this other edge that's not sewn, and it's gonna get pressed back 
and then it'll be ready to sew on. So we're doing, I haven't pressed it back. See, they pressed it back on this picture. It shows it pressed. We're gonna sew this after it's sewn. I'll press it open and I'll press back this little tiny bit, just like a quarter of an inch. And then this edge here that's not been pressed, this inner edge is the one that will get sewn to the front of our garment. And I'll show you that after I finish prepping my placket little placket detail for you. Here's where it's sewn up to the little mark, and I've just pressed that open right where I stitched it, but I didn't press the whole thing because it's gotta get sewn to the garment there. And then the outer edge is getting pressed up, so you can see here's my 5 8 inch, so it's just, a, it's, uh, you don't wanna press it so that, you don't wanna press this too much. You don't wanna make this too narrow because it's got to cover this 5 8 inch. So you can see I pressed right up too, but not past it. So it will actually, see it fits inside there. So we're gonna do that on both of these outer edges. And that's why the picture looks, see when it's laying there, that's why the picture looks like that in the direction. So we're gonna get both of those pressed. And now we're ready to sew this on. Front placket, here are my little, oh, my little, button loops and they're just tacked down and now I'm, my placket's just going to line up right along that and what I've done is I folded back it's sewn right here I've just kind of folded that out of the way and I'm doing the same thing with this one so that they line right up on top of each other and then we're just going to sew that 5 8 inch line and then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on that one and we'll have our placket attached it is this step right here and once that's done, which will be just a second, I'll show you, we'll flip it around and press it. And it's going to look like that on the inside. It's going to be beautiful, so pretty. And then we'll be ready to start the back and pockets. So here's side one stitched. You can kind of see where they meet. And then I flipped it around and I'm ready to sew this side. And this all gets flipped to the back. You can see my little button loops flipping out, and then this is going to get pressed around, and see that encloses that little neckline very nicely. And then we have to decide, do we top stitch it or do we hand whip stitch it down? One last look at the placket for a while. So this is the back side. I have not stitched it down. It's just folded and pressed and pinned. We don't want to stitch yet because we have a ruffle that's coming um, towards the end, and we need to fold this back over that ruffle. There's some things that have to happen. So not stitching it down yet, just kind of held in place for now. And we're going to go on to the back. We're just gonna do a center back seam. We're gonna mark where the park pockets go and we're gonna sew it in our back and do pockets next. I'm pinning all my pockets and when pinning the pocket, these little circles are where we sew to. They mark everything. So we have circles on the pocket piece and on the dress piece. I have notches on both, so there's lots of places to help you match up to make sure you get it right. And then when you go to sew, you're actually sewing from circle to circle because we need the space around the pocket to sew the pocket to pocket front to pocket back when we're done. Now, another thing that I do when I'm doing this is I've laid my front and back on top of each other. So here's my two pieces. And after I get one pinned, I double check them. I lay them on top of each other before I ever sew to make sure everything lines up because there's nothing worse than accidentally mismarking and having a pocket off and you go to sew them together and it's um, it just doesn't work. So I double check first, everything's lined up. So now we're just going to straight stitch this little area right here on all four pieces and then we'll be ready to do side seams in around the pocket. So I've got the pocket stitched on and it shows, so here we are sewing in our pocket and it says to under stitch. And what that means, this is the pocket piece, this is the garment piece. We're going to stitch close to that edge on the pocket side. So when this pocket is pressed in, when it's on the body, you don't see this stitching. This is the outside of the garment. This will be on the inside of the pocket. So we're just stitching through all those layers. Um, and that's it. That's so we're just and make sure when you start and stop that you only do it where the seam is. You don't want to do it in this left over here because that's we need that. We can't have that stitched down. So we're going to start and stop right with that. So you put pins in if you need to, whatever it takes, and that's all there is for the edge stitching. If you skipped it, no one's going to know. It does help the pocket lay nicer though.
Here's my side seam pinned up to the pocket. So we're gonna sew, you can see my stitching from where the pocket was sewn, so we're just gonna sew straight down. This is the bottom of the pocket. We're gonna start at this side and sew up to the underarm. And then we're gonna come back once that's sewn and we can pull this away. See how easy that works? And then I'm going to serge around my pocket. And because I have um, left myself room, I can easily do that. Okay, let's talk about our sleeve really quickly. If you are doing the view that has an extra casing of elastic sort of in the elbow area, um, it doesn't say a lot about it. It sort of says, sew your sleeve together and then put your casing on. But I'm going to tell you, it's a lot harder to sew a casing around a circle. So if it were me, I would lay the casing on the inside, if you're doing this view, and sew the casing almost all the way to the seam line. So you would leave a little bit like an inch and a half on each end, but sew the top and the bottom of your casing. Then take your sleeve with the casing on and sew the underarm of your seam. So this is part of the seam. And then you could come back and you would only have to sew this little tiny bit of the casing after the sleeve is together. And it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to sew around the circle. Um, you can, it's wide, it's big enough that if you have a free arm machine, you could get it around. But I think it would be easier to do it in two phases, personally. I'm not doing that, however, I don't want that around my arm. I didn't even want a full length sleeve, I want more of a three quarter sleeve. So I'm just going straight to sewing my underarm seam. So I've got my pockets in, got my side seams in, here's the center back. Here's my seams, I've pressed everything open. Here's the pocket, so this is the inside. And since I was to this point, I went ahead and just finished the hem edge with the serger. So this is now finished off and ready for me to come back and hem it. If you can serge the hem, you can go ahead and put in the hem. So a lot of times I will. I will go ahead and just get that part taken care of. I didn't do it yet. And if you wanna add lace, you could add lace to that hem at this point if you wanted to. But we're going to do sleeve, so I'm going to go ahead and sew my underarm of my sleeve and then we will be ready to, um, it's time for elastic casings. Now the casing for the hem at the bottom is self casing, I don't have to add um, bias for it like I would if I were doing the one in the elbow -y area. So we're just going to go ahead and serge this together, roll it up and make our casing for the bottom. Here's the sleeve. I've just searched my little underseam and I've and I've searched the hemline and I've turned up for my casing and I'm stitching it on. If you're doing exactly like the directions, um, instead of serging like I did, you will fold up an edge and press it and then fold up again and press it and then this and then stitch down your edge so you won't have a serged edge on the inside, you'll have a finished edge. It will look like this. Make sure when you start and stop, so here I am, where I, um, I started right here on the seam, so it's holding my little seam allowance down, but I'm gonna stop back here so that I can get the elastic in. You don't wanna sew your hem all the way around because you gotta get elastic in there. Gotta have a little bit of hole for that. So I'm gonna get both of these to that point and then we'll fish our elastic through. Now working on the sleeve, I've got my casing. I have a little hole in the casing. I've got my elastic. And because I changed it from the wrist to a little higher, I did just make sure that it wasn't too tight. I don't want it to um, leave a mark on my arm uh, where I put the elastic in. And you could even leave it without, like it would just be a nice full sleeve if you don't want an elastic. But I'm making a warm, cozy jammy, and I want the elastic to keep my arm warm, even if it isn't all the way to my wrist. So. We're going to take our piece of elastic with a safety pin on one side. We're gonna find the hole I left and we're gonna start fishing it through. That's what the safety pin does. It gives you something to hold on to and it slides easily in the casing. And we just push, 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 push. And then I hold on and strain it out. And before I get it through very far, I'm going to pin down my tail because if you don't, you'll lose it on the inside and you'll have to start over. So we're just gonna put a pin so now there's my little tail. When I get it through the other side, then we'll overlap our elastic, um, elastic to elastic, stitch it together, and then we can close up our little casing. This is the last project that I'm going to be making, 
in this sewing room. I'm kind of sad about it. I really liked this sewing space, other than I'm in the basement. When I'm in the room, you can't tell from where I'm sitting, but right there's the door. There's no window in here, which is one of the things that I'm sad about. My new sewing room will have lots of windows. We're actually going to be doing some renovating and changing, and when it comes time, I'm going to share all of that with you because I think it's going to be very fun and exciting and it'll be, it'll be fun to share. It'll be fun to show you the things we're going to work on. But to start with, we're just going to move in so I can sew. We're getting other spaces, the more bigger family spaces like the kitchen. That's number one. So you will be seeing not only my sewing videos, but you're going to see a few renovation before and after type videos really soon. Okay, I'm through. You can see how it's all pulled up and I'm going to take my two tails on top of each other like this, stitch them together, pull it to the inside and finish off the little hole and we'll do the same thing to the other one and then we'll be ready to set in the sleeve. Hopefully if you got to this point if you didn't forget to mark your um, front and back notches of your sleeve so you can tell your front finger back when we're ready to sew them in because they are very different. Back in a minute to set it in. Pinning in the sleeve, I always line up my garment and sleeve at the side seam. So underarm to side seam right here, so they're lined up. Make sure I'm doing front to front and back to back. This part always will fit in perfectly because there's no fitting ease or wearing ease or anything. These are usually matched just right. And then any fitting and wearing ease, etc., will be above that. This is a raglan sleeve, so it's really easy just going to sew the U on both of them and I am going to serge it and then we will be ready to finish off the neckline and the sleeve turned out so pretty. Look at how pretty that is. I'm super pleased with that. Sleeves are in. Here's the sleeve. From the right side, looks like that. Very pleased. I think these are going to be so cute. I'm really happy with this fabric. I went just fabric shopping and was just going to pretty much take whatever flannel they had available. Mostly was baby flannels. Found this, which I really like, and they had a few um, nice plaids. I'm, um, I almost bought a just a traditional buffalo check, which would also have been a very cute old-fashioned nighty. Um, but I didn't want to match up. It was a large one, and I couldn't live with not matching my plaids, so I skipped it and chose a pattern that didn't need matching up. We're going to now go on to our neck ruffle, and we have this piece. We're just going to sew our center back at the 5 8 inch, so I'm going to do that really quickly. We need to come over here to these little ends, and we need to sew the 5 8 inch. We're going to do our little ends. So we've got our little ends. Come in and trim up this end. So I'm going to cut out some of that corner so that I have a nice sharp point when I go to turn it. See how nice that looks? So we're going to do that on both ends, and then I'm just going to press it flat like this all the way across so that it'll be ready to apply. I'll be back in a minute after I get that all done. Neck line ruffle. So we're going to open up our little placket. This is, where the pl this is where the placket is sewn on, so the placket and stuff is hanging out over there. And we're just pinning, we're putting the edge of our ruffle right up next to that, and we're just pinning around line up the center back seam of the ruffle with the center back seam of your garment. There was a little bit of ease for me, not a lot, but a little bit, and I could easily just stretch it to make it fit, so you may encounter that, so don't be surprised. So you can see the ruffle comes right up to the end, so when it pops up, it's gonna look like that. Now the way they do it is the casing is going to be part of this seam allowance is going to become our casing. So this is where we're at. We're just going to sew on the ruffle right now. And there are markings on the ruffle, so you can make sure you get, um, it's, that's just to help with the spacing so it gets on nice and even. So once we sew our straight stitch that on, it shows us flipping it down, and we're gonna trim off a little bit of our excess because there's, there's a lot of bulk there. And then we're gonna top stitch down this little seam edge to create a casing for our elastic. If you're doing this, what I'm going to do is after I sew this 5 8 inch line, I'm going to serge this edge instead of having to do the flip under thing, and then I will top stitch down that serged edge, and what that will do is it will give me a finished edge 
it will make it a little less bulky because this I'm working with a pretty heavy, it's not super heavy, but it's flannel and it is kind of bulky. So it'll just make it a little smoother in this neck so it doesn't get too thick around the neck when it's trying to gather. So I'm gonna straight stitch this and then search the seam allowance edge. I'm not taking anything off, I'm just finishing off that edge. And then I'll come back and we'll finish off the casing and do the elastic. Here's the ruffle before top stitching and now I've surged that edge. I've trimmed out on the inside so now this can just be pressed down and top stitched and we're just going straight across and leaving it open right here. This is where our elastic is going to go in. So we're going to be catching it pretty close to the bottom down here so there's room for the elastic. Then we'll come back and this will flip around. We'll top stitch that down and then we'll just have to sew our buttons on. So getting close to done. So I'm going to top stitch this and feed my elastic through. Here's my um, the elastic guide. So I just laid my elastic across for the size and cut it so my elastic's ready to go. So I've stitched down the seam allowance on the inside. So this is how it looks from the outside. It's nice and neat. And here's the inside and you can see the placket isn't finished off yet and I've already inserted my elastic. So I'm starting to stitch it or push it through. And once we get it pushed all the way through to the other side, make sure you pin it so that you don't pull it through. So this is what we're doing right here. But we're going to pull our elastic through and then we're going to, we have to somehow stitch down this elastic so that it doesn't um, pull back in. And if you see, the stitching line will help, but what I'm going to do, once I get my elastic through this other line here, um, I'm going to just put a pin to hold it this way, and I'll show you when we're ready to sew it. And that will just keep my elastic in place so that when this gets folded around and stitched, this stitching across here will actually hold my elastic, but I don't want it to go anywhere until I get that stitched. So I'll show you that when I get to it. We're gonna pull elastic through right now. Okay, here is our little ruffle sewn in. You can see my casing is done. And what I did is right here where that little seam is, when it was open, I, let me pull this pin out. I just stitched down my elastic really good right there to hold it. And now I'm just folding everything in so we can top stitch down our placket. You can see it's all pinned down, so this is now going to get stitched down, and then the neckline will be done. I will tell you, because I'm using such heavy fabric in this flannel, that it didn't gather as well as I was hoping it would, and I actually removed a little bit of the elastic. The neckline was just too big. Um, it stretched out the elastic a lot, pulling in such heavy layers. So here's my neckline. So I did remove about three inches of elastic to make the neckline just a little bit tighter. You could, if you don't want to do a self ruffle like this, you could have you could insert lace here instead, and that would be really pretty too. Okay, I'm gonna just top stitch down this, and then top stitch in my hem, and sew on some buttons. Sew so my placket. I'll show you some close ups at the end, but here's the placket. Here's my little button loops. So there you go. Here's the sleeve. Doesn't that look cozy and warm? And it's really a cute old fashioned style. I really like it. So if you want to make this in a delicate batiste, if you want to do some lace insertion in the sleeve, add lace to the hems, add lace to the neckline, that sort of thing, you could really make this elegant and old fashioned. And it would be pretty easy to turn this, where there's an elastic casing, into a drawstring casing. Um, if you wanted to even make it more traditional vintage style. It is designed so that if you follow it and are really careful with how you turn it, everything lines up perfectly and it's quite easy to top stitch it down. All that's left for me is to sew on the buttons, which I'm getting ready to do, and turn up the hem. And because I've surged my raw edge, I'm just gonna fold up that hem and top stitch it on and then I will show you the finished garment in a few minutes. Here's the finished nighty. Sewed up great, cute, cute design. I think the sleeve is great. Now remember, I did shorten the sleeve a little bit and it's still long. And I also went with the shorter length and can you see, it's still really long. Here's the back. This neckline is so pretty and because it has the elastic, see it's nice and stretchy, so you don't have to unbutton it to pull it on and off. There's a child version in this too. I think this would be easily adaptable if you want to have a vintage look, go with a delicate batiste, 
or a, a muslin or an all over solid flannel or maybe a um, check like a buffalo check would be great and then you could do a drawstring where the elastic is and it would be very vintage looking just like that give you a more um, antique look and change out the buttons it would also make a great just house dress especially since it has it has a pocket included